What is going on guys? Dr. D here from One Hive Invicta bringing you a recent Random Elite War recap between One Hive Invicta and Shadow Ravens. Uh, Shadow Ravens are, um, they're a great clan over there. They're part of the South Raiders family. Um, we are just going to hop right in and have a look at the war statistics. Uh, right off the bat though, I'll say that uh, these guys initially uh, contacted me because there was a huge uh, town hall um, differential here between us and, and them. Uh, they had seven Town Hall 11s and we had four Town Hall 11s. Um, they had nine 10s and we had 11 10s, but um, I think uh, two of their 10s were, were 9.5s and, and three of ours were 9.5s. So at any rate, um, 10s and 9s were roughly matched up. Uh, however, the, the, the Town Hall 11 uh, issue was was pretty tough. So as I, as I like to say, we had the Town Hall 9 advantage, and uh, Invicta seems to really shine when we've got a Town Hall 9 advantage. Um, at any rate, let's hop over and have a look at the war statistics. Okay, so here are the basic war statistics. Um, you can see that Invicta was able to get 21 triples. Uh, Shadow Ravens had 20 triples. Um, if we flip over to the uh, war screen, um, you can see they, they missed on uh, one of our 11s, um, had a, a couple of triples on 10s. These were bully attacks by their 11s. Um, and uh, they did it actually get McGrady, who's a, a 9.5, and, and Tom, who's a, a 9.5. They were able to clear those two. Uh, with their um, Town Hall 10s. <coughs> um, and then they cleared all of our Town Hall 9s. So uh, props to them. They did a nice job there. Uh, if we look over here, you can see um, we were able to handle all of their Town Hall 11s and even got one triple uh, by Sean Sean. We'll definitely be watching that today. Um, this uh, also was a Town Hall 11 triple, but it's actually a 10.5, as you can see here. Um, moving down, uh, we had one 10v10 Town Hall triple. That was by Wiser, and we'll definitely be watching that. And then uh, these were 9.5s, and we'll, we'll show one of these 9.5 triples because I don't get a chance to show those very often. Other than that, um, the Town Hall 9s cleared all of their Town Hall 9s, so we didn't have any dips there. Uh, the breakdown was, was tough though. Um, like I said, we had seven, they, they had seven town hall 11s, nine town hall 10s, and then nines. And then they actually at the, at the very bottom here, um, in order to, uh, in order to make numbers, they, they threw in a couple of town hall sevens. Um, of course, oh, and a town hall six, uh, Sparrow took care of those. We're not going to watch those triples, but he did get a six pack. Um, so they had seven Town Hall 11s, nine Town Hall 10s, and then the rest nines except for those things on the bottom. In contrast, we had four Town Hall 11s. So their Town Hall 11s went down to here. And like I said, that's actually a Town Hall 10.5 roughly. Um, got some 11 defenses, uh, an 18 Grand Warden, um, which means that he's got the attacking power of a Town Hall 11, but the defense is just barely above what we would think of as a Town Hall 10. Um, then their uh, Town Hall 10s roughly matched up with ours. So as I like to say, we definitely had a Town Hall 9 advantage in this one. Um, let's have a look at the at their clan real quick. Uh, Shadow Ravens, they're part of the South Raiders family of clans, and we had just had um, an arranged war with South Raiders. So oh, I suppose it's been almost a month ago now, um, but very solid group over there. Um, Jay Blaw uh, messaged me on GM right when we matched and asked if we wanted to try and even things up. Um, we were trying to work out how we could even things up with um, them having, you know, three more Town Hall 11s than we had. It's, it's pretty tough to do that. So we just went straight up. We didn't worry about putting uh, Wardens or Eagle Artilleries on the outside um, and, and just uh, ward them as if it was a, a regular uh, farm war. Um, yeah. So uh, results wind up being 81 to 79, 91.63 to 88.50. They definitely gave us a run for our money, but we were able to uh, come up with a W. 
uh, mostly due to that Town Hall 9 advantage, I guess. All right, let's have a look real quick at our six-pack Warriors. Yo-Yo um, got himself a six-pack, one on an 11, one on a 10. Um, Iggy, gosh, I wish I could show both of his attacks because he just crushed it this war. But Iggy had, we're going to show at least one, um, he did, he did a dragon attack that was very nice that we won't get to see, but uh, we'll watch a, um, uh, a Valk Loon attack that was pretty, pretty cool to watch. Um, Sparrow, as I said, he got himself a, uh, a, a six pack on, um, the, the Town Hall 6 and Town Hall 7. Uh, we won't be watching those attacks this, this, uh, recap. Sports Buff, um, I feel like I'm always reading his name, uh, getting a six pack. Where's he at down here? There he is. Um, so sports tends to six pack all the time, and consequently he is moving up to 2.0. This is the last war that he'll that he will be in Invicta, and uh, so we'll definitely show a recap of his. And then Ruda, who is brand new to Invicta, just came up from Swarm, and he gets a um, two fresh triples. So nice job, bud. And we're we're gonna watch one of Ruda's attacks as well. All right, enough talking. Let's get into some of these attacks. We're going to start with Ruda. He's on number 27. He hit hit this. I was working on this um, with him on online, but he does a mass hog attack here. And you'll see he starts um, by just kind of uh, dropping an archer over here, trying to get rid of that hut, and then brings um, a golem in the, in the clan castle. Now the goal here is just, one, uh, allow a little bit of tanking so that you can get that archer queen, and then uh, have the king bust through this wall to pull the CC out. Um, up here, he's going to get a lot more value for his money than I thought he would. The plan was to start um, his hogs up in, the, up in that area, but he clears that area out so it doesn't have to, and it actually kind of messes up the pathing for those hogs a little bit. You'll see here. Um, at any rate, uh, the CC is pulled, and... The queen is taking care of the CC, baby dragon, and uh, a witch and a valk. And that is it. Look at that. Um, really tiny kill squad manages to do some pretty hefty damage. He sends in a ton of hogs. That's 22 hogs right there. Uh, he does catch a lot of springs here, you'll see. Um, now, we were hoping that the hogs would path around that... Uh, Unfortunately, because of the way that he started, they didn't path down towards the 6 o'clock like we had thought they would because those Tesla's popped and they pulled those hogs north. At any rate, he um, pulls things back uh, together and um, has some hogs that he had saved for the back end. They wind up going down south because that's where he needed them. Still crushes this base. He's going to have a swag spell at the end. Let's go ahead and speed this up just a little bit. Um, he does not swag the spell. Uh, Ruda's apparently quite the gentleman. I would have swagged it. <laughs> but uh, swag spell, swag queen ability, tree stars in the bag. Nice job, Ruda. All right, moving on, we have Sports. Um, Sports does a really, really sweet attack here. It is a queen walk with uh, baby drags. And so we've been seeing this um, more and more. But the idea is to initially get a funnel set, quake out a part of the core of this base, allowing the queen and whatever is in the CC, oftentimes it's, it's uh, bowlers with a couple of healers on them, to get in there and get all of those air defenses. So you'll see he starts his queen over here after the funnel is set up towards the 9 o'clock. We'll speed this up just a little bit. In comes the bowlers and the king with a healer on, or two healers on them. Quakes out that core. Now, unfortunately, the healers separate from those bowlers. Um, however, uh, the queen is now in there. She's taken out one air defense at this point. Um, the uh, this, this Tesla farm here pops and it does a little bit of, or causes a little bit of concern, but finally some of these bowlers catch up, but just long enough to get killed by the by the Tesla farm. Uh, so the queen is in there now, and, and at this point I think he's a little bit worried, but he starts dropping baby dragons down here. They take out the enemy queen, 
and they start doing some cleanup on this area. Now you've got to be cautious because you don't want to get those baby dragons too close to these air defenses. Um, this air defense down here was gone where the queen is at, so he starts throwing some baby dragons down there to clean up. You'll notice that he just loses one to that air defense over there. And now he's going to take out this air defense, and as soon as he does, he knows that he's cleared to start dropping some more baby dragons up top. He's still got four in the bag, three in the bag now. Um, queen is just does not want to go back over to that air defense. She will eventually here. She's going to run around the side here after she kills these skeletons. Um, he knows that that's the next thing on the list, so he drops a couple of baby dragons and uses the queen ability right away, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven baby dragons up, plus the queen. There we go. Tree stars in the bag. Very nice. Nice attack. Uh, sports is moving up to 2.0. Good luck, buddy. Uh, that'll be the last recap that I get to do with you in it. Um, next, we have Gerg. So Gurgan is coming with a Bolalo here. Um, this is one of my favorite attacks, and I really like the way that he did this one. Um, this, was, uh, this was a cleanup attack, and so you see he's able to set this funnel up here with these wizards and even, even break open the base without ever having to drop one of his golems. So great, great value there. In comes the king. King is going to take out that queen because that's not where the kill squad is actually going to enter from. The kill squad comes in over here. So here comes the golems. So now he's taking care of the enemy queen, like uh, what has to happen with basically every Town Hall 9 raid that doesn't use dragons. Um, the golems are in, in with the bowlers. He's got his jump down. And just a really, really smart plan on this base. Um, there was actually, I think this was perhaps the third hit, and it looked like just a bad base with all of these um, wide open compartments. But those wide open compartments mean that it makes it really hard for bowlers. They, they go all over the place once they get into one of those compartments. So he was able to, uh, whew, bowlers under heel, luckily, when they hit that thing, uh, hit that giant bomb. Um, and he's really just taking his time here, you'll see. Um, unfortunately there's another giant bomb and that does that does some pretty hefty damage he's down to two bowlers at this point now one queen takes out that last AD and it is one AD left and after that it is I mean at this point this is pretty much done so um, drops a rage for this last section um, gets that final AD. Now the um, hounds are gonna get popped. There it goes. That, or that final hound would get popped by a bomb and it's it's done. This is a little bit scary here. He's got nothing tanking for these loons as they move into this Tesla farm. Um, he does manage to get all of these Teslas and I think he has like one loon left standing after all of this. Uh, oh no, he doesn't. He's got a few. But that is it. Tree stars in the bag. Nice job, Gerg. All right. Okay, we're going to go and check out Iggy's attack now. So Iggy, like I said, had two very nice attacks. You can look down here and see he's got 14 Valks, um, a couple of loons, 14 or 16 loons. Um, the idea here is... If you look at this base, there's all kinds of openings, meaning that three of these air defenses are able to be taken out um, simply by running around without ha having to rip through any type of walls or anything. Uh, so he's doing a good job here. He's trying to set a good funnel so that he doesn't have to worry about where his Valks are going to go. Drops a single Valk there to just help clean up just a little bit. And once this king goes, yep. He's going to bust in. He's got a 3-3, three, three, um, plus a, a ton more Valks in there. He sends them all in. Now, unfortunately, 
Uh, they don't actually run the way that they're all supposed to here. You'll see some decide that they're just going to go and try and rip through the walls there rather than follow this nice trail all the way around. Um, that's because of that queen. They aggroed on the queen, and I don't think that was, uh, that was intended, but it happened. Um, doesn't matter. The king just took out uh, that air defense down at kind of the 7 o'clock spot. Queen has not used her ability yet, and we've got some Valks ripping through the wall up here. Nonetheless, he starts his loons coming in because everything is being tanked by these Valks, and all of the air defenses now are down, and you can see this is clean up. It is GG, tree stars in the bag. Nice job, Iggy. All right, um, we are going to watch an attack by Tom. A nine, Tom is a 9.5 on our side, and he has an attack on a 9.5. We don't get to see these as often. Um, he, does, he does hogs on a 9.5, and uh, basically it is the um, stoned hobo that we often see at Town Hall 9. Um, let's speed it up just a little bit. But uh, this is a very nice attack. You know, one of the difficult things about 9.5 is uh, we often think of them as without those those uh, Inferno Towers as being not all that different from a, from a 9 anyway. But the fact is with that extra bomb, and not in this case, but in many cases, those higher level Teslas, those are the two things that get added right off the bat. Um, it makes it a, a 9.5 is a, is a hard hit for a Town Hall 9. Um, at any rate, uh, you can see Tom has the extra spell. Um, he's dropped two of his um, jump spells at this point. Uh, he's dropped a rage spell, and now it's all about the heals. He's got his max hogs, and he is pathing around. It's just something to see that. You see those max hogs hit a, a giant double bomb. Um, they're able to push through that as long as they're under heal there. Uh, for those people who have been playing this game for a while, it's very interesting to see hogs um, walk through a, a giant double bomb. It just doesn't, I mean, for, for those of us who have played for a while, it doesn't happen very often, or it never happened before, and, and now to see it is, is pretty impressive. I will say, a couple wars ago, I had, uh, I got hit with the, the triple giant bomb, and so we saw uh, the old um, bacon like we used to see, and by triple giant bomb, I mean a double mixed with or just outside of the um, the bomb tower. If you haven't seen that yet, uh, Clash Tutor's got a very nice video that looks at some of those things. You should check that out. Uh, at this point, it is all cleanup. Um, he has uh, walked through all of the defenses. Um, plenty of hogs left. Uh, queen beats through a wall there, and that is it. Tree stars in the bag. Nice job, Tom. Okay. Uh, you know... You don't get to see many attacks by Wiser because he does the videos and I think that he doesn't put a lot of his attacks in. But Wiser was, was uh, over here with Invicta and with, with his Town Hall 10. And so we get to see uh, a great Town Hall 10 triple by Wiser. Um, you can look down there. It, it is the Town Hall 10 version of a Bolalo. I've showed a couple of these before from Aish. And so... He's setting up his, his funnel here using um, bowlers and a couple of uh, golems. Wall breaks in, and his kill squad is going to go in and take out these two ADs right here. Drop a heal on the kill squad, and then a rage. Now, most of the bowlers are gone at this point, and at Town Hall 9, of course, the, the goal of that um, bolalo is to keep your, your bowlers <laughs> intact as long as possible. Um, so here comes the air raid portion of this. Uh, he's got um, just a couple of, of hounds, and you can see that hound is about to pop already. It does, and he sends in his max hound from the top. Um, loons are, are tanking it, or coming in and taking care of that first Inferno Tower. The Queen took out the second Inferno Tower. And so right there, that hound... Uh, is, is about to pop. It does not make it through all of this. However, he's got plenty of loons right there. 
comes rushing in with some more loons and drops the, a rage right at the perfect time. And that is it. One defense left, and now it's down. The queen has basically no health left whatsoever, but she is uh, doing, doing a little bit of cleanup here. He's got a few hounds left that help take out the, the hounds from the CC hound that popped and those last loons, and that is it. It is tree stars in the bag. Nice job, Wiser. There we go. All right. And the last one that we're going to look at today, and I have not had, I since the update, I haven't seen many of these. Um, and it was nice to see a Town Hall 10 triple. So Sean Sean was our, 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 I mean, a Town Hall 11 triple. Sean Sean was our highest Town Hall 11. And he gets a triple on this base, a very, I mean, this is, this is a, a brutal looking base. But he comes in, uh, sets his funnel with, um, bowlers and healers and we were talking about this today in in chat if you can if you can get all of your bowlers to funnel in and then bring a, a mass bowler kind of raid into that core um, you can really really do some damage at, at town hall 11 you've got a much better shot of tripling if you can pull all of those bowlers in and keep them in the core that's exactly what he's able to do here um, so you see he drops some giants ahead of time to try and get that eagle to target those giants. Uh, it, it does for that first burst of hits. Um, after that, it is uh, hitting anything that's in its way. Um, free spell goes down on that backside inferno tower, and it does its job and takes out that backside inferno, or they're able to push through to get that backside inferno tower. Um, at this point, you know, you can see he's got just a couple of bowlers, there's one up here that's about to be dead, and now it is. Um, Queen is alive, and it looks like there is an awful lot left. Down here, he dropped a CC with um, miners in it, and those miners do some pretty decent work. Mostly what they're doing is cleanup work. Uh, the nice thing about this is that this queen and this these giants and the um, Grand Warden are tanking for these... Miners, at least initially they are. Um, at this point, they stop tanking for the miners, and he takes out that last uh, Tesla tower. He's got a lot of base left here, as you can see. Um, but uh, with those healers going, he's able to keep that queen up. I mean, she is at 100% health right now and has not used her ability yet. Uh, this was actually very, very tight on time. But he does manage to pull it off. Uh, got th those miners still around there. Had he not brought those miners in the CC, he would not have gotten this raid. They've done. They've cleared trash all the way around this base. Um, just a, a great attack. And that is it. Tree stars in the bag. Nice job, Sean Sean. All right, that is it, guys. Um, again. Uh, you know, 81 to 79, um, a, a really great squad over there. I would encourage you guys to go over and, and check them out. Um, that is it for me. This is Dr. D signing off saying keep clashing hard.